Yes, working. Okay. Hi, and anyone who comes by, welcome to my end of day birthday stream. I actually sort of thought about doing one last night, but ended up being more tired after running around and doing some treating myself to some shopping and whatnot. Ooh, this is nice. Falling a little bit more than I'd like it to. Okay, that's a little better. Okay. Uh, no. Okay, that's better. And I decided I'm just... Rather than get into more of the... Let me turn myself down a little bit. Actually boost the game up a little bit too. Because it seems a little low. Okay, hopefully that works out better. Um, I thought about doing this last night, but ended up sort of tiring myself after doing a bunch of shopping. But I decided after a fairly good birthday, I'm going to do a little bit of streaming. But relaxing and rather than getting into more of the Final Fantasy X-2 playthrough, which we'll be doing more of. I'm in this little bit of a zone where... Every time I want to stream is usually really late, so I can only do it on the weekends when I don't have to go to work the next day. Do I... I don't have either of the max. So, right now, I have streamed this game once before. This is a game that I'm still trying to platinum. Mostly just due to the fact that it takes forever! <laughs> Oh my god, it's been so... I picked this up a little while ago, but I haven't played it in so long. I'm also hoping that me just smashing the button doesn't get to be too annoying. Yeah, because I'm going to be doing this a lot. Maybe I should boost the game more. I'm not worried about dying or anything. The only thing that's going to be an issue is failing, especially since it's a runaway mission. Which I hate those. Didn't mean to do that. I went to heck, press X. But circle is dash in most other games, so I think to press circle. But circle is the ult. The reason I'm using the Kino is because I also need to max him out. And he actually has a fairly fun moveset, even though he's a rat bastard kind of character. Though I do give it up to the One Piece series, particularly Oda, for making most of the characters somewhat likable. There are only a few characters who I think are just completely irredeemable bastards. Anyone I can know I can see having some merit, but at the same time, what he did was still kind of messed up. And that's mostly just due to the perspective of caring about Luffy more than the military. Now down over here to deal with Hannibal. Please stop pressing circle. So last time I streamed this game, I had an enormous amount of luck getting gold coins. In fact, I even got the gold coin I was most trying to find, which was Luffy's. So, crossing my fingers that that sticks, because I'm only missing... I think two more of the gold coins that are needed through these kind of battles. Everything else is just maxing out their crew level, which I'm already trying to do for the trophy. So those will be coming. And I'll mean, even though it's not required for the trophy, I will have gotten every coin.
And the only other thing that I love the Pirate Warrior games. And I know there's a new One Piece game coming out. World Seeker. Looks good. Graphically it looks good fine. I do not care for the model of that type of game because it definitely seems similar to what was our last one that also released on the Switch? I want to say it's Grand something red Grand red something which I don't remember I played through a little bit of it and it just seemed like your story is basically just meant to be a hey here's our greatest hits trying to be an original story but also just also pandering and that annoyed me that in the game play felt very clunky I feel like they were they allowed you to use Luffy's ability to move around which I felt like was supposed to be more similar towards like using a grapple hook but it was so hard to use and just not I think the camera was probably the bigger issue in that regard but it just made it so difficult ult to play with that I was like this isn't as fun and a lot of the areas were once again just like the characters of here's the thing that you recognize so, I looked into World Seeker a little bit, but damn it, did not mean to press circle. But World Seeker also, one video I saw of someone who I guess got early access to play at a demo or something, they literally, it felt like when I watched their video, it looked like they were using the same attack over and over again. And I don't know if that means they're... To me, that seemed like a bad video and also a bad representation of that game to get me to want to play it. Because if they're winning with doing just one attack over and over again, then why bother learning any combos? Granted. I can say that it's similar with this game, but that's a pirate. It's a warrior's game for you. Pressing square to win is sort of part of the deal. Oh yeah, I need to be using this one. Because this gets me more points to that crew level that I need to max out. And Kaku, I'm pretty sure, is one of my furthest behind. Kuma or whoever it is, just don't die while I'm doing it. I don't think I'll fail if it happens. Oh, it's pacifist. Ooh, I definitely should rescue him then. Ah, crap. Well. That sucks. Because pacifist is also very far behind. So it still really sucks that Pacifista and Kuma look identical. <sighs> Luffy, you should not be inspiring a bunch of Marines. Because that's most of my enemies. <sighs> Damn it. Didn't even hit. down here Bonchan please survive for just a little bit while I bombard Bellamy okay I'm running over to you you are one of best boys uh, this way is best. Luffy, why are you beating up Bonjen? How dare you? 
Oh wow, they did pretty well on their own. It's very rare that the AI is actually able to do anything of merit. In any Warriors game, not just these games. Over here. I thought you were gone, Bellamy. Or was that? Oh, when you said something, it was probably just you reading. But I basically came, did a big attack, and left. Damn, I missed doing the final attack. And I did it again. And hit nothing. Again. God damn it. Okay. That's also a switch. You. For a little bit. Because you're already maxed. Usually I try to focus on one person, since I'm trying to max a bunch of people, but... Lo, why are you here? God, your move sucks right now, Akino. Okay, just gonna say that, just because Fujitor is moving while you're doing it. Oh wow, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Shit. No, 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 no. I have lost this kind of battles just by accidentally hitting them into the area. I hate these kind of battles. And I've accidentally hit them to the area while having the area under my control. Which is kind of even more bullshit. <laughs> Out fairly well, but this overlay covers almost nothing. For this game, at least. I know I'm gonna potentially sw switch to other things later on, but I don't know what yet. I don't care, Law. You taking my areas that I beat up is not going. Stop being a dick, Fujitora! You're supposed to just die after me hitting you a bunch. Uh. Shit! And you're being attacked by Law, too. 
this is about to be over. So if you can survive just until it ends, that's great. There. This should, in theory, finish him off. Yes. You can't know you just worked with a bunch of pirates. Pretty sure that goes against your morals, but fine. It makes me so sad that they're not making any more of these. Because I was sort of hoping they would continue a pattern of the first game followed the story. Second game did something sort of semi-original, still kind of following the story. And then the next one was, and the third one was following the story with a kind of BS plot for the Don Flamingo art. Which I think was also somewhat bad timing of this game came out around the time of the ending of that arc, at least in the manga. So. And I get game development, they had to come up with something to include it. But maybe would have been better off just leaving it out. Okay. Here's my allies. Whitebeard and Garp. Damn it. I want to say they're both maxed. I know Garp is... I think Whitebeard isn't, but I think they're, I think they are maxed. I'm going to kick myself if they're not, but. <gasps> oh, they both are. I'm so glad I didn't go through with that because that would have been a waste of time because this is all I'm going for. Bullet Chan's already max. You were also a waste of time in the last one. God damn it. I just need to get all these people up with these people. Okay. Do reminder. Cracker Alkuma, Kizaru, Kano I'm currently sort of working on by playing with them. Fujitora. The only ones that are going to be really hard are the people I can't actually play as. Like, these assholes. And everyone past Mangelion here. Same for Hori, Cody, Cock, Ku, and Wiper. Uh, okay. I thought they were both maxed, so I'm so glad I didn't do that. Zolo and Mr. Two. No? Mr. One. One chance to the lock guys three. Why am I even bothering? Everyone's maxed. There's two. I'm pretty sure it was part of that level three group. I hope. God damn it. I was just looking at that page and now I even still forget. This is also going to be another. He's running away from me, isn't it? I hate prevent escape. 
Yeah, so now I prevent escape, and unfortunately, it's still also in the same area, which is kind of annoying and boring. Granted, starting from a different side of the map, it's like. Motherfucker! I hate Logia users. They don't stun as easily, I feel like. Granted, he's also in his special mode. Also, we need to get off of fucking Zolo, because Zolo is absolutely maxed. All the Mugiwara crew is maxed. Bucky, what the hell are you doing here? God damn. Part of the reason I picked this game, besides the fact that it's very easy and I'm trying to get the platinum on it by maxing all these characters, is I went on my One Piece binge session, because I love watching One Piece. Granted, I still multitask while I watch it, mostly because I already know everything, because I read the manga religiously. But I think... I like watching it a little bit just because it helps me review some of the details. Like, I didn't even think I fully grasped what. Cause when there's a lot of exposition in the manga, it's hard to focus at times. And even if I read it over and over again, I still may not get it. So having the full on motion example of oh so that's how mama's power works and it's sort of bullshit because I did not understand her ability prior to that and I think the only other thing I really sort of wanted to see was how the anime handled her backstory because it is dark Actually, is probably one of the more irredeemable characters. Also, now that I think about it, I don't think even her backstory was supposed to make her seem somewhat. I think even the anime did a little bit job of making her seem more innocent, but it's also she's kind of a spoiled fucking brat who throws a tantrum, and because she's powerful and phys. He, because she's large and powerful, she gets her fucking way. Despite the fact that she literally killed people in the process of throwing her tantrum. Like, if she wasn't all powerful, she'd just be a bitch. <laughs> and the fact that people forgive her all the time for it is asinine. And the lady who adopted her, sort of, got what she deserved. <laughs> Which I feel sort of odd of if I should actually say what happened or not. Because I know what happened in the manga kind of forever ago. <laughs> Or at least it feels like forever ago now, because we've been into this new arc where the crew's finally all back together again. I kind of enjoy the way that the mom arc was able to focus on, was able to give a remove half the crew, basically. But I sort of only hope that, because it gives a spotlight to more people, but at the same time I do hope they also are able to, in a way, repeat it by help doing another arc focusing on some of the people who were left out of the mama arc. Or at the very least, probably have them play more of a forefront in this arc with Kaido.
Though it's gonna be odd, because they're gonna have a lot of characters now that I think about it for the Kaido arc. Because they have the full main crew. Burgess and friggin' Teach. Go away. They have the full main crew. They have Law's crew. And then Kid showed up. So, they got quite a bit. Not to mention all the other members of the worst generation, as they were called. All that showed up, and they're part of Kaida's crew, which I do not remember all their freaking names. I think it was, I think his name was Bishop, and Extrick is the only one I know off the top of my head. I am sort of interested in seeing X-Trick's backstory because I'm pretty sure he was a he was sort of like Cody in that he wanted to be a marine and even was a marine I think so I want to see how marine turned pirate but I love my anime bullshit I will also say One Piece, despite One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach were the ones that were my big three in a way for shonen manga. And they still are in many ways. I know the new ones are probably like My Hero, I think Black Clover was listed, and still <laughs> One Piece potentially. But those were like. But One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach were like the big three long running. At the time when I was younger, and One Piece is still ongoing. Naruto and Bleach have both ended, and I still love One Piece. Bleach, I barely cared about its ending. Naruto pissed me off <laughs> before its ending ever happened, and the only reason I read its ending and got to the end of it was because I'd been with it for so fucking long. And then this ending pissed me off even more. And the only reason this ending really pissed me off was because Naruto and Yanana getting together is sort of bullshit. As soon as their relationship started, I was like, this is flawed. Because it took Ninji dying for Naruto to notice her. And sorry, that just spells for a bad long-term relationship. <gasps> I can't see how that would be good in long-term of he's doing it out of duty, it felt like, more than anything. And I get it. I like the crack ship anyway. A for that show. Or ended up liking a crack ship. I never expected that to turn out. But. It still felt bullshit that. And I heard later on that. Basically the author had already decided. On how those sort of pairings would end up. Especially for Naruto and Inata. But. Considering how he did it. He should have developed Inata more. <laughs> Or any character more. And I think that's that's definitely an issue with the bloated cast, which is why I I like that Oda gives time to have backstories. Like I know some people were annoyed with Sanji having left the crew, being just another member of the crew to sort of leave to then come back. Because, uh, let's see, at that point, Robin, Usopp, and Nami have already also done it, so. It's not the first time he's used that mechanic, but at the same time, it gave even more depth to his backstory. Showed where he came, up. came from even before Zeph, which it may not 
kind of been a question many people are asking, but thinking about it in retrospect, there is some sort of merit to why is a child on a ship to then end up getting stranded like that. So, that at least explained why he was there. And it also allowed them to do the freaking Power Rangers analogy. Or Kamen Rider analogy. With his birth family. Biological family. But I like that it gives crew highlights. There are still stories that I still want to see. I want to see, um... For one, I want to see Luffy's mother. <laughs> I had a... I was still only watching the anime, but when I first saw Boa Hancock... In, like, a trailer, I'm like... I, a first, assumed... That she could potentially be Luffy's mom. And I was so pumped and then so disappointed. <laughs> Since I also kind of hate her character. So. Okay, I can know you're Max now, so I have to pick someone new. And will this bounty just go away? <laughs> Cause... I don't need any more of them. Uh, you're... Oh, god damn it. One more down. I could play as Luchi. I don't mind his moveset. Don Quixote, I don't mind his moveset either, so maybe I'll go with him. Also matters if they're broken or not. Um, where are you at? Crocodile's broken. Never playing as Teach. Pretty sure I still have to max him, but I hate his moveset. He is the slowest asshole. You are not broken. So you're not happening. Uh, I don't want to play as either of them either, because they'll probably be slow also. Because, uh, no, you're not broken. Fujitora. I don't know your moveset. I don't think I played as you. Hmm. Or the other options play as someone I actually enjoy playing as. Which may be what I go for. Let me go with Luffy. Which costumes do I have on him? Ah, uh, Z. Z with meat. Normal. Normal is beginning of series, though if it was really normal beginning of series, his shirt would be closed. And the slave, which is change of pants, to the bark, which is slight change. Basically, Luffy just goes through palette swaps. Which I saw something on Twitter the other day, which I thought was very amusing. Um, it was, I guess, a questionnaire with um, Oda. Uh, and it was basically a question about, about how in one arc, Luffy put on some bracelets and had some wristbands and stuff. Uh, and Oda basically mentioned that, yeah, Luffy wouldn't... Anything that Luffy wears that has any sort of style is mostly due to other characters dressing him. Like Sanji, Nami, Robin, and Brooke, I think were the ones he said have a style. Uh, or maybe even Usopp also. 
Oh, but basically, certain characters will dress with style L. All other ones are very more plain, or Luffy will dress in a suit of armor, for Christ's sake, so. Anytime he's wearing anything quote-unquote cool, it's mostly because someone else told him, wear this. <laughs> Which is fitting for his character, even, so I find that adorable. Uh, oh, crew level list is here. I forgot that it was here. I kept backing out. Um, I'm gonna memorize faces to make sure I don't end up with people. This can get really hard when I only have like two or three people. Actually, no, maybe even easier. Oh, perfect. Someone I don't even want to play as. <laughs> That's the best one. That. Do I have proper coins and skills equipped? Increased gauge. Duration. That's good. That's good. Deej, you are kind of the best first person for these fights, just because... Fuck! What? Shanks! God damn it, you should not have long range bullshit like that. But you do. Lumi's one of the few that I can actually do some sort of combo with. <laughs> or I will actually try to do it because they're so good! It's actually insane kind of how OP Lumi's gum gum power is. No! Get up! Get up! Oh, I can't remember if the last time I streamed, if I did this one on stream, but there was this part of One of the requirements to get something was to actually finish this mission with Teach, and that's sort of what made me hate playing with him. I can't remember if I did that one on stream or not, but it was the most bullshit fight I have ever done. fighting. Zolo! Get back here! Get out of my way, fuckers. Wait. God, God damn it. Get off of that. Zolo. God damn it. I'm the only one that's actually gonna be hard. Come on. Uh, no. Going down. The bottom will probably be better. 
Because we sent Shanks in that corner. Oh, Kuzan's in trouble. Okay, I guess I'm not getting him. I think he's maxed already anyway, so... favorite part about Pirate Warrior games is I know it's bullshit to just spam specials but at the same time it's so good I wonder if I can save either of them Kuzan is about to be a treat I'm gonna go not in trouble, trouble quite yet. So. And now he's in trouble. I still just get some more allies at the end, which is why I'm doing it. Okay, Don Quixote, I'm gonna go back to you. I'm just gonna go all straight for the special. Did that even hit Shanks? Oh my god, okay good. He takes like nothing for damage. Ever. Don Quixote, your moveset is great because it freezes them in place. Both of these guys up here, and Brooke is still alive, miraculously. Mario, stop! Oh my god, so annoying. Okay, that is come on. before the special just so I could have it on two which means black girls will still come out when I finish a combo oh I beat solo earlier he should not be a part of that I'll come to you. I'm basically putting. Oh my god, I have so much damage already. Elephant gun. At least some of them got mixed in with that. No, there are people behind me too. Try to get 
rid of more of you. Uh, That's one. Come on, get pick that up. Thank you. There we go. I realize this mission is sort of like the final island mission. Not quite as much of a Oh my god, I'm in yellow for health. You are dangerous. Unlock your last part. Teach, you are not in trouble enough for me to unlock Max Gage. So. Holy sh. Oh! Or maybe now you are. Or at the very least, or were. You just auto maxed out. No. That's the, oh, that's the one I can kill him. There must be something that he takes so little damage. Because anyone else, this should be destroying them. With how much he's taken, I swear, he just, his character takes less damage. Oh my god. I have the struggle on the Phylon Island. Island. Leveled up during the fight, Luffy. That would have healed you. Don't get that. Teach is already fucking max. God damn it. Oh, no wonder, because I tried to avoid him. Oh, yeah. That's a special ending that you have to get. Thank you for disappearing. Oh, all the islands are finished out. I'm gonna play someone else for the final. I wish there was an easier way to say, hey, I wanna switch, yeah, switch characters. But, okay. Cruzon, you'd be a nightmare if I tried it with you, because they're actually strong.
I know who I am. I keep forgetting. I... Uh, Lucci, you're not Max, which makes me not want to do it with you. Pretty Toro may be a good option. Hmm. Also, I was thinking who I enjoy playing as. Her would probably be the most just because I'm Max. Oh, I want to show off her costume because it's one of my favorites. It's Wang Yuanji! Who is my favorite Dynasty Warriors character? Best girl! So, love her. And then she also has some thriller bark. Which I'm guessing this is the model it's based off of. Honestly, they both seem to be based off of that. Because yeah, neither show off her new hairstyle. They all seem to be based off the older model. An old hairstyle. Okay. Uh, could do. Don Quixote actually seems like a good idea. You need to make sure to set his skills. And hopefully not get someone who's already max from my partner. Which this one has a better randomization rate of that not occurring. Perfect! Kuma and Pacifista, whether... Both things. Ah, it's Kuma, which I think is lower than Pacifista. I'll probably switch to another game after I finish this level out. One of the parts that I love about getting someone low level is they're going to level up a lot during this fight, which means they're just going to autofill the Kizuna Rush gauge, that's what it's called, and all their special attack gauge. Also, basically, heal themselves. Um, let's do that. He moves so quickly. Tried to mount for the first time last time I streamed. And he leveled up again! Perfect. I don't really have a lot of allies right now, so I don't know why that's gonna hurt.
Oh, so good. After Nami and Robin, it's over here. I can't remember if Usopp and Chopper are next, or I think it's Usopp and Chopper. It should be here. Yes, I was right. Fun tearing through a horde of enemies. This is the fun of the Warriors games, basically. The KO count is already at like 1700. 100 exactly. And the rush age attack is only 200 less than that. So good! Birdcage. I feel like Birdcage should close in at the very end. It's not gonna hurt Don Quixote for it to close in on everyone around. Obvious that I've done this fight a lot, it should be. Okay. Do this. I think overheat might be better than birdcage. Oh no, birdcage is pretty good now. <laughs> In full force. Okay, basically cut through all of their health. Actually, I don't want to say that. In terms of Frankie and Brooke, any more Robin? I had a little bit of apprehension at first. I literally did not watch the Water 7 arc. I tried to skip over it originally. Water 7 and Anaslave. When I was on my first original binge of the series. Anyways, I was ready. I skipped over it. I think I watched the art that came after and then decided, no, I need to go back and actually watch the art that they are introduced, that they fully join in on. Because I think part of me was apprehensive to new people joining the crew. Because you already have, because those dynamics are already sort of set in, that 
new people coming in. At the time, I felt may ruin it in some ways, but that absolutely is not the case. It's sort of me being apprehensive to the change of it, and. Which is why I think I'm I'm slightly more open to Jinbei just because I had I know I had those apprehensions with previous members of the crew and realized no they're wrong. But also Jinbei is a character that we've seen and know. Cause he's been around for a while, so you already kind of like him. So him actually becoming a member of the crew is like, yes, give just more character. I think it does also factor in, and he actually has a fairly distinct role. He's a good helmsman. He can take control all of the wheel. Cause I think Frankie. And Chopper were the ones doing it for the most part prior. At least in terms of during Sirius, hey, we need to quickly move and you need to have someone with the strength to spin the wheel very quickly. So I remember seeing them mostly on it. But Frankie is also the shipwright. He built the ship. So if the ship is damaged, he can't be at the helm. He needs to be able to. Hey, let me repair this so we don't sink in the process of getting away. And also, refilling cola Ola for the coup burst. So. Plus, I think I find it fun every time um, Jinbei and Nami interact. And I even love, I absolutely love the moment when he had with her, or in uh, the Fishman arc. Of he realized the suffering she went through at someone he formed, he had been friends and partners with long ago. Oh. And even potentially even felt responsible and was open to, hey, if you want to hate me, that's fine. Because. And. I just love that moment. And it also showed how much Nami had grown because she sort of was it's like, no, I forgive you for everything. You didn't actually cause any harm to me or so. Oh. I love that entire arc for Nami. That and it was just a fun arc because it's like, hey, we haven't. These characters have technically been apart from each other for two years. And now they're, for the first time, back adventuring together in it. That was also so much fun. I will say the Arlong arc is probably still my personal favorite. I cried so much at the end of that arc. Um, Aeroslave is probably another high up there one. Skypea as well. Dumpflamingo arc is probably one of the worst. Just because of how long it feels like it drags. And the anime did not help that at all. They dragged out those Coliseum fights for way too long. Oh, 
And something I noticed during my binging of the series, anytime I do it, it's like, okay, you have the opening, you have the rundown of, I think they may have finally cut back on doing that, but the rundown of Age of Pirates, hey, Gold Roger said this thing, and now everyone's out to sea, and we've only heard that 20 million times. So, it is. But you have the opening song, which is one to two minutes. You have that, which is another probably minute. And then you also have a breakdown of, here's what happened last time, here's where everyone's at. Which I'm not going to fully not, because it is very helpful. Especially when the characters are like, hey, they're, these people are over here doing this thing, these people are over here doing this thing. But at some point, it's like... I think the worst I ever saw it was like there were seven minutes before actual new content happened. And that, to me, is not good. <laughs> of, I had to wait through seven minutes of back content. And stuff I had technically already seen and catch up. Catching up from a previous episode that at least when I'm binging, I technically just watched. And I get it's coming out on a weekly basis, so not everyone's binging it in that manner. But even then, it happened last week. <laughs> if people are keeping up to it that weekly, then it happened a week. So we, there shouldn't be need to be so much detail in it that it takes up that much time. Because seven minutes of a technically like 20 minute episode, oh, it's almost already cutting into half of it. Because then you also have to factor in a few minutes for the ending and the ending preview for the next episode. Which is another potentially two to three minutes. So... The episode itself is like 20 minutes, 7 minutes for the opening, 2 minutes for the ending, ending and previews for the next episode, you get 11 minutes of new content and actual progress in it, so, which makes everything drag out much longer. Like I said, I do think they've cut back on doing that Roger recap thing, just because besides having been heard multiple times, I don't think it's impaired as imperative to the story anymore anyway. It's like, yes, this happened, but we've been at this for a while now. We know it. So there's less need to repeat it. Okay. Alright, finish. How many people are still left? Robin. Almost done. Frankie is still apparently here. Uh, Luffy for sure. Usopp. I think I heard Nami scream, so. Oh, okay, yeah, Nami's still here. Almost done with. Frankie! Brooke. Good lord, there's still a lot of people here. Ace, Luffy, Brooke, Lolo. Mm -hmm. 
Last one. Oh my god, these techs are so far behind. Your kid should end this. Thousand KOs and four thousand Kuzan attack at KOs. <laughs> that goes up so much. It was already close to the end of three, but that basically puts them halfway through four already. And one step closer to my freaking trophy. Nami would be very happy. I have a lot of belly. Which I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but congratulations once again. Probably the million time I've done this. Okay. Oh, I'm just stretching. Sanji. Yeah, Fishman Arc's probably also one of my favorites now that I think about it. Like I said, they have a lot of good moments. And it, that backstory with Tiger and everything. In a way, it made me retroly, retroactively find Arlong not as bad. Because compared to Hottie, Arlong's almost... is slightly better. Or at least he's not out to kill all humans. Just enslave them. So genocide versus enslavement. Or not even so much enslavement, but hey, pay us and we won't kill you kind of thing. So I guess the better way to say that would be extortion? <gasps> Plus, you see his past, and if things had gone differently with Tiger, Tiger probably, Arlong probably wouldn't have been as bad. But I love that backstory. Also because it's, it's Koala's backstory. And Koala is probably my favorite 
side female character. Her and Perona are fairly high up there, and I can't. Another thing I cannot wait is to see more with the Revolutionary Army. I would also love to see Frankie's dad, <laughs> who abandoned him to go out to sea, and I'd like him to just be some. Basically, foot soldier. He's not some big, powerful dude. He basically cleans the gutters. From... And then... Kind of thing, Ingwer. He's just in the dirt, but... And I'm coming across him. Frankie still looks enough like himself that he may recognize Frankie, or at least Frankie may recognize him. And see him try to extort Frankie. But I don't say Frankie falling for but I think maybe other people. Like, hey, that's your dad. Don't you want to help him? No. <laughs> My dad's Tom. So. Okay, let me switch this back over to standby while I figure out what exactly I might switch to. And then put that up. So I'm going to turn off my mic as well. Hopefully this isn't falling apart because it also looks like my phone's having trouble loading the stream, which is concerning. Okay, good. That was a little bit of a heart attack because I don't want this falling apart. Use the dashboard. Okay, pausing this and then gonna switch over to something new in a few minutes. 